Welcome back. As the White House continues its focus on providing Ukraine with the support it needs to, in its war against Russia, President Biden will turn his attention to another region today with its own security concerns at Southeast Asia. The president will host Southeast Asian leaders at the White House as the U.S. seeks to assure our allies in that region that it is committed to their security amid a looming threat from China. The timing of this meeting happens to come as our latest episode of Meet the Press Reports takes you inside something that's never been seen on camera, a full-day war game exercise that imagines how America would react to a Chinese attempt at essentially invading and taking Taiwan. Here's a sneak peek. As you can see here on the map is a very large concentration of Chinese People's Liberation Army forces at potential ports of debarkation for an invasion. We want to focus on uh, a last-ditch effort to deter. This is a time to be sending the strongest possible message to Beijing, both privately and publicly, that there will be very severe costs if they actually go through with this. China has sort of seen our reaction to Ukraine, and we want to make sure that, that we're surprising them with how we react here. Hit the Americans as hard as we possibly can in the Western Pacific, keep them out of the fight while we move on Taiwan. I would support uh, early knockout punch against Guam. I think we, we start very forcefully with a missile bombardment on Taiwan. I think we want to bring the military to their knees. All right, Stacey, high level here. What just happened with move one? China's invaded Taiwan. It began by attacking Taiwan's outlying islands near the mainland. Then it followed it with a large uh, air and missile strike on Taiwan and on U.S. bases in Japan, and on U.S. bases in Guam and the Northern Marianas. In response to that, the United States followed up with bomber attacks on, US on Chinese ships in port, and there was an air battle over Taiwan where American aircraft flying from the Philippines came in and um, engaged in combat with Chinese aircraft that were trying to bomb Taiwan. So after move one, can you assess which team is winning? I think it's a stalemate right now. Uh, China has strategically blundered by pulling Japan in, and the United States is still well positioned to defend, but China also has a lot of its assets left and has a lot of power that it can apply. Joining me now on set is uh, my colleague, NBC News uh, correspondent Carol Lee. Also with me is Admiral James Stavridis, former Supreme Allied Commander at NATO, now an NBC News Chief International Security and Diplomacy Analyst, and the man who helped us put together this, uh, this partnership with CNAS. Carol, take us into the, the year is 2027. There's a bit of a pretext that got us to the point where China and the United States ended up engaging. Well, exactly. And Chuck, the thing that was so striking about the war game was how significantly it escalated so quickly. So fast. This was it over was about a seven-day period. Over yeah. a seven-day period. And and the the way in which they each team decided to approach this. You heard there uh, Michelle Flournoy talking about deterrence and sending the strongest message possible. None of that worked with Ukraine and Russia, and it also didn't work here. And the parallels that are there between the battle in Ukraine and what's and the, the war game on Taiwan are really striking. Uh, and and so I think it was a really interesting exercise in the sense that it showed that it was even a weekend there would be a stalemate. Mm -hmm. How deeply the U.S. could get him drawn into something like this with right. um, direct conflict with China and, and just in the region it would be, I mean, talk about World War III. So that it was fascinating. It, it was. You know, uh, uh, Admiral Stavridis, the, the big lesson I took out of it, and the big lesson, our two, we had two members of Congress, a Democrat, Mikey Sherrill of New Jersey, Republican Mike Gallagher of, of uh, Wisconsin, both are on armed services, both really, both veterans, so they really understood the concept. But they were struck, and I was struck by, boy, this would be a lot harder than uh, rearming Ukraine. This is a lot harder when you don't have a NATO um, in Asia. That was the big takeaway I had from this. What have you learned from these exercises over the years? Yeah, and I've done many of them, Chuck. As you can imagine, this is something U.S. Indo-Pacific Command does constantly, always updating. And Carol Lee's exactly right, which is uh, currently drawing the lessons out of the Ukrainian conflict. Uh, two points really jump out at me. Uh, one is uh, the uh, technical level of this uh, that you're going to see as opposed to Ukraine. In other words, this is going to be maritime 
air mm -hmm. on air. It's going to be cyber going in the background, which is certainly part of the, uh, the conflict. So it's going to be a very technological play. And then secondly, um, Chuck, it's, it's leadership is going to matter here. And that's the hard one to assess. Just mm -hmm. as we blew it on Afghanistan, thinking the Afghans would stand and fight, and we blew it on uh, on Ukraine, thinking the Ukrainians were going to fold. We got to get this one right. And so I think a, a subtext for me that I'm looking at is what is the fighting spirit and the will of the Taiwanese? That's going to yeah. be quite determinative here. Here's the thing that I, if I were to say there's a uh, the, the biggest question I have in my head on to this whole exercise is, I think, and the hardest part about this exercise is putting ourselves into the Chinese brain, okay, the strategic mindset of the Chinese. Uh, look, this was a highly experienced Chinese experts that we had running the red team. But ultimately, you know, there's still a Western bias that is in any Western educated person's head here. And I think that's the hard part is we assumed that China would be, okay, we're going to, this is how we're going to keep Japan out. And of course, you're like, all that did was draw Japan in. But I imagine that's the hardest part here is what is, what is in Xi's head and, and what do we know about the Chinese militaries? Um, let's start with uh, President Xi himself. He's a patient figure, and that is also of a piece with China in general, as opposed to that kind of impulsive uh, activity that you see out of a Vladimir Putin. Uh, the Chinese are patient, and Sun Tzu is their greatest military strategist, and pulling out his very slim but brilliant volume, The Art of War, is well worth doing for anybody who wants to understand uh, the, the, the mind of the Chinese military. Um, what I will say, Chuck, is if you dive into Sun Tzu, um, it's all about deception. The the best battle is the one you never actually fight mm. because you've surprised your enemy. But Sun Tzu also says, and it's worth knowing this, when on death ground, fight. And that, I think, is something that is shot through China's thinking about military. I thought the first move, as you, as you give us a snapshot there, made a lot of sense. With the one exception, my eyebrows went up significantly with China immediately striking those bases and instantly drawing the United States into war. I think they might take a more patient approach. But if you want to kick off a war game and move it yeah. fast, there's yeah. nothing like a strike. Well, I'll tell you this, the one other thing, Carol, that came, I came, I came away with here, number one, water is just harder. Yep. Everything, that 90 miles may only be 90 big miles. Difference. That's a big mm -hmm. difference. But there's something else here, and I'm curious if you've gotten this in any of your reporting. Both Gallagher and Cheryl seem to indicate to me going, hey, we'd like to be more involved in things like this. This seemed to be an exercise that a lot of times the Pentagon will do these exercises and then we'll report to Congress what they need. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, like, no, 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 us participating, it's a lot easier to understand what you need here. It was a sense of like, maybe the Pentagon's been going about this all wrong. They need to loop members in and how this works. Yeah, open it up and, yeah. and have, well, because a lot of what they do is going to depend on whether or not they have support for Congress. One right. of the things, I mean, you heard the Director of National Intelligence, Avril Haines, this week saying that China wants to take Taiwan. They're trying to do it by coercion, but they are determined and would right. do it by force if they needed to. And so part of what the conclusions were from your war game was, we, should we be arming Taiwan in a different way? Should yeah. we be more involved? And those are questions that you have to deal with Congress for on. And so bringing them in could be could be a little bit of a game changer. Well, let's, Admiral, let's bring it to the real world right now. President Biden is with some Southeast Asian leaders. Here's one of the big just sort of practical takeaways. Yes, we have Guam. Yes, we have Japan. Yes, we have a, a, a basing now in Australia. I was there for the opening of it uh, when President Obama went there, and you realized how important that was. Strategically, what allies would you like to see the United States have uh, in Southeast Asia that could help uh, protect a Taiwan? Um, I'm going to add one who is a strong ally, and I think we can depend on, and that's, of course, Singapore. And um, as was indicated, Japan is very strong, and South Korea is very strong. So if you really look around the circuit, we're missing one slot, and it's the Philippine Islands. And don't mm -hmm. forget, we had wonderful bases there. We fought hard there in World War II. We had Subic Bay, Clark Air Force Base. That, in many ways, was the centerpiece of our Western uh, Pacific strategy. So 
um, if we could possibly get them back on board. We've had a very rough run, but they've just had an election. That would be the one I would like to add. Final thought, Chuck, Vietnam is no friend of China. Um, nope. That's another distinct possibility. Cameron Bay is one of the best natural harbors on the South China Sea. So there, there's two to work on, I would say. Boy, how about what, what uh, I guess, look, people in, 19, in the 1940s probably didn't expect us to be so close of allies with Japan. Perhaps people will be shocked if we start basing in Vietnam. Anyway, uh, Admiral Stavridis, Carol Lee, thank you both. Uh, really proud of this episode, folks. And Jim, you were terrific in making this happen as well. Be sure to check out our entire episode of Meet the Press Reports. It streams tonight for the first time at 1030 Eastern. That's on NBC News Now. NBC News is home for news. And it will be available tomorrow on demand on Peacock. Still to come, a symbolic abortion bill vote fails in the Senate. What do Democrats do next? Democrat of Wisconsin, Senator Tammy Baldwin joins me ahead. You're watching Meet the Press Daily.